So now we're going to talk about the third type of benign tumor which is actually present in infants and that is a fibrous tumor. We've already discussed the hemangioma and the lymphat uh, lymphatic tumor. Now we're going to discuss the fibrous tumor. Okay, this fibrous tumor actually range from uh, fibromatosis to congenital infantile fibrosarcoma. Now, there's a difference between fibromatosis and fibrosarcoma, obviously. Uh, and uh, the main difference is actually the amount of cells which are present in each of the tumor. In fibromatosis, there's actually a very little a cellular proliferation of spindle-shaped cells. So you would see, uh, see in fibromatosis a uh, small amount of cells. While in congenital infantile fibrosarcoma, you would see a cellular-rich lesion exactly opposite to that you are seeing in fibromatosis. Um, although this congenital infantile fibrosarcoma is actually similar to adult fibrosarcoma uh, histopathologically, but the congenital infantile variants have an excellent prognosis. On molecular level, uh, you would see that there is actually the chromosomal translocation, which is blah, blah, blah. If you want to read, do read it. Do learn it, but I'm not gonna even. <laughs> I'm not gonna, gonna even say it. Okay. And anyways, this strong chromosomal translocation actually results in the generation of an ETV6NTRK3 fusion transcript. Okay, this is something you have to remember because of the translocation. There's actually uh, the generation of an ETV6NTRK3 fusion transcript. Now, how is that fusion transcript? Uh, is oncogenic anyway. Now, the gene product of the ETV6 is actually the transcription factor, while the gene product of the NTRK3, which is also called uh, TRKC, is actually the tyrosine kinase. Um, like other tyrosine kinases, uh, fusion proteins, which are found in human, uh, human neoplasms, this ETV6 TRKC, which is also the tyrosine kinase fusion protein, is constitutively active and stimulates signaling through the pathways which are RAS and PI3K AKT pathway. And because this RAS and PI3K slash uh, AKT pathways are oncogenic, so that is why because of uh, the uh, fusion transcript which is uh, formed by ETV6 NTRK3 uh, fusion you are seeing the tumor and you are seeing the tumor because of the uh, stimulation of the oncogenic pathway which is your RAS or PI3K slash AKT pathway. Uh, now that is why among soft tissue tumors this ETV6 an NTRK3 fusion transcript is actually a useful diagnostic marker. So yeah, now we're going to talk about the fourth and very important type of uh, benign tumor which is called teratomas. And the uh, definition which I've written here is actually being copied from Wikipedia as <laughs> I've written that statement from Wiki. Can you actually see it for me? In, uh, at first, what I saw for me, it looks like a head, and it looks like hands, you know. And this is neck, but no, that's not true. This is actually the uh, sacrococcygeal uh, teratoma. Well, these are actually the legs, <laughs> anyway. Now, this teratoma is actually an encapsulated tumor with uh, tissue or organ components. And usually it has all the three germ layers. Okay, rarely it may have one or two germs there, but mostly it does have all the three germ layers. Okay, and they occur in these uh, teratomas may occur in three different forms. They may occur as mature teratomas, uh, they may occur as immature teratomas, or they may occur in unequally malignant teratomas. The mature teratomas are usually because they're actually mature, that's why they're usually well differentiated cystic lesions and they are benign. Immature teratomas, they are actually teratomas of indeterminate potential. We don't know whether they are benign or malignant. 
while uh, the third one is obviously malignant and this is usually admixed with another germ cell tumor components such as endodermal sinus tumor now the teratomas usually uh, start to show during two peaks in life either they may occur in two years of age and at two years of age usually the teratomas are of congenital uh, neoplasmic region and they may also occur in late adolescence or early ad adulthood and they are also prenatal region but why they are occurring at uh, you know a later uh, phase of life because they are actually very slow growing tumors. Now let us discuss a little uh, about sacrococcygeal teratomas which are the most common teratomas of the childhood and they account for 40 percent or more of the cases incidence is 1 in 20,000 to 40,000 live births and they are four times more common in girls than in boys so yeah boys should be because at least this is one of the diseases which is affecting girls more than boys unlike most of the other diseases yeah and 10% uh, of the sacrococcygeal teratomas are associated with congenital anomalies uh, in which the primary defects of the hind gut and cloacal regions and other midline defects, for example, meningocele, spina bifida, and they're not believed to result from local effects of the tumor. Okay. Now, uh, the division is such that in uh, sacrococcygeal teratomas, the 75% of these uh, teratomas are mature teratomas, 12% are unequally malignant, and they're very lethal, while the remainder, that is, 100 minus 75 plus 12 whatever the answer comes is actually immature teratomas so yeah seven day uh, most of them are actually mature benign well uh, differentiated cystic lesion type uh, mature teratomas 12 percent are uh, unequivocally malignant and they're lethal now the malignant potential of the teratoma actually correlates with the amount of immature tissue and usually the immature, uh, when we're talking about the immature tissue, we're talking about usually immature neuroepithelial elements which are present. Uh, the benign teratomas, which are uh, the mature teratomas, they're usually encountered in younger infants, for example, in infants who are less than four months of age. Whereas children with uh, malignant regions, they tend to be somewhat more older, okay? Uh, we have just discussed one side of teratoma that is uh, the sacrococcygeal region but you can also see uh, the teratomas uh, in other sites on other sites for example in testis ovaries various midline locations that is mediastinum retroperitoneum head and neck you know all those midline regions so yeah this is all what we have discussed uh, the four very important benign tumor lesions which you are going to see in infancy and childhood they are hemangiomas lymphangiomas fibrous tumors and teratomas and we have discussed all of them hope you enjoyed it and this is all from robinson basin i don't think so after uh, listening to this lecture you'll be even required to read this portion of uh robinson but anyways have a nice day bye Okay.